Yeah. Alrighty. So we're turning off I-70 right here. Um, we're heading down Highway 24 towards Hanksville. We're heading into Capitol Reef National Park. That's where we're headed. <laughs> I do have GPS coordinates this time. We are in the Dodge with the trailer hooked up. However, on that trailer, we have a Jeep. So this one is going to be a repair job. So we've got, we've got pictures. We've got info. We're way more prepared on this one. Than, than our last one. It's a broken tie rod on the pitman arm. So we're going to go replace the pitman arm and have them drive out and it'll be perfect and it'll go smooth. And we remembered every tool that we're gonna need. Right, Mike? Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, ish. It's me and Mike, so one way or another, we're gonna get it done. Well, let's go. We've only got another few hours of driving. There's this this big black wall. Yeah. Going on here. Yeah. The problem is with flash floods and things like that is it's never raining where the flood happens. It's usually raining on the mountain up above there and that is up above where we need to be. What the guy was telling me, it's in the wash. If it's raining on the mountain above us and water's coming down the wash, is it gonna be a trickle? Is it gonna turn into a flash flood? These are all the things out here in this area that you have to be worried about. It is getting into monsoon season. This is when we've had to go get the vehicles out of Cane Creek because it just all of a sudden fills up and catches you off guard. And we're wanting to not be one of those people. Temple Reef National Park. Here we are. What do you think? So here we are. All Whoops. we can do is play it by ear. It's pretty hard right now, though. Some little mini waterfalls there. So this is what I mean by it can turn bad real quick. Right there. Holy right there. That just happened. It's flooding the road. Wow. That was a good one. Water's dumping right here. Dumping like crazy and flooded. And all these dry creek beds run down to where we were driving up to where there was nothing. So there's no there's no rain there, there's no nothing. But there's a big flood of water that's heading down those ditches going towards that area. And that's how people get caught in flash floods, because it's not raining where they're at. Update. We're, Update. Ha we're hanging out. We're waiting for them to allow us to go in and 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 look. Um, yeah, we're trying to offer our services to help out if there are any vehicles stuck further up, because um, we can kind of get where Forest Service factory vehicles can't get. Of course, it's that whole gray area of someone helping, and I and I totally understand that they're kind of like, no, cause you're gonna go out there and get stuck and then we're gonna have to go get you out. But we're trying to offer our services in a, in a very diplomatic way. <laughs> Said it's still flowing in one of the watches we have to cross. So yeah, here we are patiently waiting. We got a gentleman with us. 
So we're heading up. We're going to go talk to the main ranger. He's up at the first uh, flood area. There's a couple rumors of some vehicles that have been washed away or washed downstream. Um, like I said, of course, we don't have the record because we weren't expecting this. They can't get up past the flood areas to assess the situation and see what's even going on. That looks deep. Seems more like rafting. Yeah. Now look, we got a road. Hey, there's the road. It's right we there. We got a road. In that eddy. <laughs> Swooping, <and> looping. <laughs> that eddy. <laughs> Moving People moved the signs to the right side so they could park on the left side. Nice. Um. Um. <laughs> hang on. I got a plan. <laughs> all right. All right. Hey, look at how high the water was on that one. Oh man. They're not stoked. Huh? Oh, it pushed it into the other. Yeah, one. maybe they shouldn't have moved the no parking signs. <laughs> oh, there's... oh, hey, look, it's still ripping over here. Search and rescue is here. Here we are. We are driving towards Loa and then over to I-70. So we've got to go a different route because there's flooding down below. So we're coming back tomorrow to get uh, John's truck out. And we're trying to contact um, someone with the National Park because we're offering up our trucks to bring our trucks in to help get the vehicles out. We're trying to offer our expertise and our vehicles to help out. But we'll see, but yeah, we're gonna be back tomorrow, um, one way or another, to get the truck out, the original truck of this whole adventure.
Alrighty. Here we are. Day three of driving to Capitol Reef. I am rocking just my dirty truck and me. That's it. We're heading in to go get this truck and get it out of there. So, hopefully things go smooth and we'll, we'll get as much video as we can. Because I'm the video guy, I'm the mechanic, and I'm the truck driver today, so. Start the show today. Your dad shoes. They're still glowing white. That'll be day changed by the end of the day. This wash feeds from the south, and you can see it was probably about eight to 10 inches deep. Barely even touched the truck. The other wash feeds from the north where the storm was, and they lost six or seven vehicles, one confirmed with people in it when it floated away. So be careful, watch your surroundings. Know the weather in the area. Now let's get this truck fixed. I, he's like my bailing wire on there. <laughs> Love it. It was, I knew it wouldn't work. Hey, I, I had to do you gotta I try. Had to try. So now in order to get this off, in order to get it off the right way, you have to pull the box off in order to get a tool on there to pry it off. We brought a specialized tool to pull that off without having to remove anything. So here's the specialized tool we're going to use to remove it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn um, passenger. Good right there. There we go. <clears throat> so see, we cut it, relieve the pressure so that we could drop it off. Because this is cast so you can crack it once you get a cut most of the way through without cutting into the splines. 
but it was so rusted on there it would not turn loose of it so we still had to use a puller but i don't think the puller would have pulled it unless we cut it and then that's what that's what went right there and when that guy breaks you have no steering most of the time it happens off-road You know, it fought me a little bit, but that stands to reason considering the three days it took us to get here to put a pitman arm on it. But, this together, it's driving, it's turning. He's, we're heading back out, gonna go load up on the trailer and get out of here. Big important yeah, thing. Yeah, the, the, the main focus of this part is there's Oreo cows here. Yeah, the Oreo cows are back. This is how you get to your Oreo wizard. There you go. Do a milkshake. It's wintertime when you get your Oreo blizzard. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, the cows aren't frozen, so you don't get your. 